Great, we're connecting now. Now, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this webinar the cooking demonstration for a part of Gluten Free Living Week with the Celiac Society of Ireland. My name is Jill Brennan. You may or may not be able to see me on the screen at the moment. Um, actually, you know what? There I am. Hello, everybody. Welcome. This is Imar Gourde. He is our guest cook today. Imar is an award-winning chef and he specializes in French Irish cuisine and is inspired very much by Irish locally grown produce. He started cooking pretty much from the age of eight in France. And he's best known for his produce as Le Skinny Chef. Imar, welcome. And thanks so much for your time this morning. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. So we're going to do a little bit of cooking today with uh, some very simple dishes uh, that you can do at home in a few minutes. I am very conscious of uh, time and flavors as well. So we want to create something simple, quick and very tasty. So brilliant. I'm very happy to be taking part of this program. It's absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. And Imer, I know you had a restaurant in, in, in Kildare Town for about 16 years, but you're now focusing pretty much on food production and your own food production. Um, yeah. So what are you going to try and cook for us today? And are you going to be using any of your own produce? Absolutely. I'm going to use two of my own products. OK, so we have a range of for the range of products we do. We do um, uh, concentrated soups. So we do French onion soup. We do wild mushroom soups. Uh, we do, these soups are gluten-free and lactose-free and also um, uh, very easy to use at home with, because they are concentrate. So you, you, you bring them home and you break them up with water or milk as you like, you know. So if somebody has a special uh, dietary need, doesn't want the lactose, they can just dive it with water, you know. So they get about three portions in the tub. That's brilliant. That's fantastic. Um, and are all these products available through Super Value? I know you came to the Super Value Food Super Academy. Exactly, in super value food academy sections, or sometimes they have it in the main fridge where the soups is, or the, the, the dips and pestles. So the other product I'm going to use today is the red pesto, which is a very, very popular. It's a, it's a pesto spread, so it's, it's slightly a little bit different than a pesto. It has a better consistency. Uh, this is a product I've developed when I had my restaurant, my uh, gastronomic restaurant in Kildare. It was a, a very easy product to use uh, for, for making a quick dinner for, for the customers and also for like big parties or things like that. So it's very convenient at home and it's, it's, you spread it a little bit like you spread butter on a, on a, on a nice bread, you know? So it's very, Sounds very yummy. I can't wait to see how you're going to use this. So, Before we get cracking, I just want to let people know that uh, we are going to give away as part of today's uh, cookery demonstration a skinny chef hamper, which will hopefully have those soups and pestos in it. Absolutely. And we're and we're also going to give away a 50 euro super value hamper, a celiac society membership, a month's supply of Dr. Coy's hazelnut and caramel bars and a Shelton distribution hamper, which will be uh, handy coming up to uh, Halloween. Uh, yes, Yvonne, all these products are available in, I'd say the majority of super values around the country and definitely super value online. Exactly. And um, also they can go on to the Skinny Chef website, which is www.theskinnychef.com and have a look at different products I'm doing. On there. Even better. So two, and, two locations to get these products. Exactly. And a couple of recipes there on the website as well, on the Facebook page as well. Brilliant. OK, well, without further ado, um, by the way, the uh, prizes will be chosen at random throughout the demonstration. So stay tuned. Remember, if you're not in, and tuning in, you can't win for sure. But I'm looking forward to see what uh, what Imar is going to cook for us today. So, what are we starting with, Imar? So we're going to start with a, a baked beer of a salmon with a, a red pesto spread, and we're going to do a, a, red, a mixed peppers brunoise. So brunoise is just very little dice of peppers, kind of a regular size. Uh, it's a French term to say like very very tiny dice, as we call it. And uh, uh, this is going to be a very simple dish, and then I, I, I made a little bit of uh, garnish to go with it, and I will show you that after, okay? I'm okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the spotlight on you now, and you'll just hear me maybe throughout it. I'm going to ask maybe a few questions that come up while we go along. Is that all right? That's fantastic. Looking Brilliant. Back on there. Thank you. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone, again. So the most important thing is to get your fish first, okay? Of, of course, go to your fishmonger or to, or to supervise you. Uh, make sure you, I don't know if you can see it very well, make sure you get 
have two nice pieces of salmon. I'm going to do a meal for two people here. So you can do it for four, for six, whenever you want. It's just multiply the recipe or whatever you, the numbers of people you need to. So the first thing is you know, make sure your fish has been scared. Okay, it's very important. The skin is not very uh, nice into the dish. And then you keep the skin on the fillet of the salmon. Or if you do a, a egg or a cod, it's the same thing. So you keep the skin on it. It's, it's, it, it, it helps to keep the fish together and it keeps it moist as well. So the skin is scared. Make sure your fish is dry as well. So make sure when you wash your fish, your fish a little bit of salt and pepper. So dry your fish a little bit like this. So that will prevent too much juice in the cooking. We should also put uh, don't match the, the shape of your fish when it's cooked, okay? Great, so, looks good. So this is the first step to do, just get your fish, your fresh fish. The second thing we're going to do here, we have a, a baking dish here to go into the oven. So just big enough for, for two portions, but make sure it's a little bit bigger. So that is a little bit of juice, it doesn't, the fish doesn't uh, kind of stew together, right? Okay. So we put a little bit of oil, just about a teaspoon of oil on the tray here. Okay, so just what kind of oil are you using, Imar? Just a sunflower oil or rapeseed oil. oil. It, it, it's not really too much important. So if you don't have any anything else or you just have olive oil, it's fine. It's just to grease the tray. So it's not really, not really important in the recipe. It won't give any flavor or anything. So I put my two fearless salmon here on the tray, okay? Now the next step we're going to do, we're going to dice the, the uh, peppers. So we get, I'm using a variety of peppers which is a little bit sweeter than the ordinary peppers, okay? I prefer this, it gives a lovely flavor with the, with the salmon. Salmon is the kind of a, a healthy flavor, so we need to kind of bring you a little bit of natural sweetness there as well, it's quite nice, okay? Great stuff. Imer, can you, is there any alternative you can use to fish with this recipe? Yes, if you're vegetarian, so you've absolutely no meat at all. Absolutely, so if you're a vegetarian, for example, at least you do the very same dish with courgettes, for example, you slice your courgette, or you can do it with aubergine as well. Um, you slice your aubergine, you put your pesto, you can actually layer them if you want, put a few more layers of courgette or use both as well, you know, so this is absolutely uh, perfect, the very same process. And also, if somebody doesn't like peppers, for example, they can substitute peppers with little dice of courgette or little dice of mushrooms or put another vegetable there, okay, so that's, that's up to you to create the dish you want, okay? Great stuff, fantastic. Well, I hope you can see me here cutting away, yes? We can, dice away. Okay, dice away. So you do a little julienne of pepper. So you need about three tablespoons of the mixed uh, peppers together. So we don't need too much here for that dish. So we just slice the first two little julienne and then we do a little dice of peppers like this. And this is important that they are not too big because if they are, not, if they are a little bit too big, they will be still raw when you cook the fish, okay? So we want a nice little crust and look lovely. So we're gonna mix that a little bit into, but we cut a little bit of rice. While you're doing that, Imer, I just want to ask you some questions that are coming in yeah. here. Are the recipes low in sugar and are they suitable for diabetics? We don't use sugars in the pesto, so there's no sugars. Uh, the, only, the only sugars we have in our product is a natural sugar from the tomatoes. Great so stuff. Absolutely no use. This is why I use that uh, that dish. Okay, so then you have only the natural sugars of the vegetable. Great. And then, if you wanted to use a white fish, any recommendation for a white fish rather than a salmon? Uh, preferably, I prefer egg. Egg. I think egg. Food is meaty. Is very nice. Uh, cod works very well as well. But um, you could use other fish. You can you can use um, um, a fillet of fish like sea bass is quite nice as well. Great. No, so this type of fish. So whatever you you have at hand, and also if somebody wants to eat chicken, you can do it with a breast of chicken as well. Oh, wonderful! So, but the chicken you have to butterfly it a little bit, so kind of make it a little bit more flat. Yeah. So it kind of cook evenly everywhere, you know. Yeah, I understand completely. That may, that's great now because that's a lot of a lot of uh, choices with this dish. So we're looking at about three tablespoons here of chopped and oh. julienne peppers, right? What nice peppers, green ones, a little, little dice of peppers. So yep. I do it in julienne first, and then I cut it, I cut it in a little dice after that. Yep, I see that. So we're looking lengthways and then across that again, people. Exactly. So, Just yep. a few peppers. Now this is, this is the first step. So we mix the peppers together. Okay, so we mix yep. the, we have a beautiful color. This is a very colorful dish. And it's so simple to do. It only takes a couple of minutes. So what I'm gonna put here, a little bit of salt and pepper, okay? 
You always yep. have to season your fish a little bit and your uh, your uh, your preparation as well. Always seasoning is very important. So now the next step, I'm gonna move it here so that you can see it very well, yes? So we have our peppers, we have our fish, okay? We're gonna season the fish a little bit. So a little bit of salt and pepper on the fish as well. Now, in and, the meantime, and I see you just sprinkle that on. You don't rub it into the skin or anything or into the flesh? No, no just a little sprinkle, that's it. Just to give a little flavor uh, into the fish. So make sure your oven is, is on at the moment at about 180 degrees. So preheat your oven. So we're going to take the pesto. 180 this degrees. So this is the, 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 the red pesto. So we need about a tablespoon food and a half for each uh, fillet of fish. So we put the pesto on the top. You might need two spoons for that job if, it's, if the pesto is just straight from the fish, it might be a little bit more uh, hard, but this one is perfect. Oh, it's so, just like butter. It's just like butter. It's a spread. So it's it's not oily. It's not too much oil. It has about 30% uh, to 35% less oil than a traditional pesto. That's so brilliant. It's, it's much more consistent and lots of flavor. We use um, we use sun-dried tomatoes, which is a very, very good quality sun-dried tomatoes. And uh, we use Herbe de Provence, which is a French uh, mixed herbs, which has gives a lot of, lots of flavors. Yep. And then we use um, garlic. And uh, that's pretty it. And then a little bit of red seed oil. So there's not too much ingredients. And of course, the main ingredients would be uh, a Moravia, which is a, a type, a style of uh, Guarana Panado style, which is vegetarian with a, a vegetable variety. So it's suitable for, for vegetarian. Great. Um, the 180 degrees for the oven, Imar, is that exactly, would that be the same for a fan oven or would it be a little bit lower? For a fan oven, yes, fine. It's, it's okay. Okay, great. Maybe for the, I, I say about 18 to 20 minute cooking for a fillet of salmon, that's about two centimeters in thickness at the sole surface of the fillet, you know? Okay. So about that. So now we spread the the best two here first, okay? So spread it evenly. So can, you, can you see that? Yes, indeed. So very simple, okay? This is the first thing, so there's no more simple than this. And then what we, we're going to do is mix the peppers very well and put the peppers to the top. So you use your hand to try to guide them in very well. There will be always a few falling on the side, that's not, not a problem. That's why I always say, Make a little bit more, okay? And with the spoon, the back of the spoon, when you put your peppers on top of your fish, you just tap it up a little bit so the, the, the peppers don't fall off in the cooking. Yeah, they stick to the pesto. Exactly, they stick to the pesto. So this is absolutely perfect. And it looks beautiful and it smells gorgeous. So now this dish is almost finished. We're gonna cook it. And then what we're going to do, while this dish is cooking, we're going to work on the next dish. Now, just to show you a little bit. Looks fantastic. I have a comment in here, Imar, that says, I don't think this recipe will work well for me. The secret ingredient is your French accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's possible, but, well, they can start learning French. Yes, <laughs> that's the thing. Le Français. So voila. So we put this into the oven. We give it about 20 minutes, 18 to 20 minutes. But at, I think about 15 minutes, you need to go and have a look and check uh, your oven to make sure everything is fine. Maybe Absolutely. I would say that uh, anybody yes, well, cooking anything, to make sure you check what you're cooking in the oven at regular times. And I'm putting for 15 minutes time in there at the moment. So anybody has any question on that dish? Uh, the type of pesto being used is the red pesto from La Skinny Chef, which is available in Super Value across the country and also on the La Skinny Chef website. That's it. That's so, it. So the second dish we're going to do now, we're going to do a little bit more cooking, okay? This is what's the first very simple dish that you could do at home. And the advantage of this dish as well is that you could prepare the dish before the dinner, so a couple of hours before, and put it in the fridge in a tray and then you go home and you're tired or you have to walk or something and you just take the tin foil or the tin film and just bang it in the oven and that's it. 
Okay. So, What's the shelf life of the pesto once opened, um, Imer? About a week and a half to two weeks. Yeah, that once sounds it, great. Once it's kept into the fridge at a nice cold temperature. Great. Also, another little tip that could be so, some, some customers put a little bit of oil on the top in the end when after they open it, just to yeah. keep it nice and moist. That makes sense. So now the next product we're going to use is a red chili pepper sauce. Okay, this is a vegan product. Okay, so this is absolutely delicious. Has a little spice to it, so a little kick, but it's not too high. Um, this, this sauce, we roast the red peppers. We, we steam them in the home juice for about two hours, and then we peel them. We remove all the skin because the skin is quite bad for the stomach. Yeah. And it gives a better, better texture in the sauce as well. And then it's mixed with some uh, fresh red chilies, and uh, we use onions, we use uh, organic cider vinegar. And there's very little ingredients again in this product, but it just comes out beautifully. Great. So this, this is a dip, so that can be used as a dip, just to dip things into it, or they can be used for cooking as a sauce. So I use it most of the time as a sauce. You know, okay. it. so it goes with fish table, with fish, with meat, with anything. Brilliant. And it's, and it's completely gluten free. Brilliant, this fantastic. Has, this product has sugar, so we put a little bit of sugar to balance the sweetness. So it contains a little bit of sugar for the person that are diabetic, so obviously that's not recommended, but there's not too much. Okay, no, that's fine, that's cool. Yeah, um, so good. just, uh, Brenda, you're obviously just joining us, what this salmon uh, is for two people at the moment, but uh, you can do this, that salmon dish, for as many people as you want, it's just one piece of salmon per, per, per portion. And um, this recipe, and a lot of people are saying they're really looking forward to this because some people are just recently diagnosed IMR and the fact that these products are gluten-free is such a help for them as celiacs to be able to know that they can safely eat these products and, um, and create these dishes. Absolutely. All the products, uh, I don't use any gluten whatsoever in, in the promises. There's no gluten on the promises at all. So it's completely gluten-free. Uh, I don't product anything that has gluten. Brilliant. So this, that's great. I'm actually really looking forward to trying some of these sauces and, later on myself. Exactly. So even, even when you're, for the people that are celiac or, or gluten intolerant, it's always very important that, for example, here I'm going to be using a, an organic rice, okay, which I already pre-cooked for save a bit of time. But always look at your packaging, because even the, that we know that rice is gluten-free, they could always be packed in the, in the factory where there's stress of gluten. So sometimes a cheap product is not an answer for, you know, for a good diet because Absolutely. It's if, any, of if anybody has any concerns, uh, what I would suggest is to look up the product and see if it's in the Celiac Society's food list, which is sent out at the beginning of every year. And if you find a product that you uh, that's not in our food list, please let us know. And what we will do then is we will follow up with the manufacturers to ensure that the product is created and packaged in an environment that is free from gluten and safe for our members to use. So again, if you're not sure about anything, get in touch with us or look in your Celiac Society food list book for 2020, um, where you will be able to find some information there in relation to products that have been uh, packaged and produced in gluten-free environments. Um, I'm our question very quickly. If you were using a side of salmon for this, how long would it take to cook? A full side of salmon? Yeah. Okay, a full side of salmon. So basically, it, it would need about 35 to 40 minutes, but in the, they need to lower the temperature a little bit. Okay. So they would have to bring the oven down to 160 degrees because the fish will have a, will be more cooked on one side than the other. Okay. Great. It depends on how the side of salmon is cut as well. So if it's all the same thickness, maybe they can put the, uh, the temperature a little bit higher. So the first thing to, to judge is the temperature. Uh, maybe 160 degrees would be a bad idea. And I think it would be about 35 minutes for a full side of salmon. Grant, okay. Uh, we have another quick question here as well. Uh, can you batch cook these meals or should they be eaten soon after cooking? No, absolutely perfect to cook in advance. Great. But it, the, the problem with the salmon, it dries out very quickly. So that's the, the to, to, to pre-organize your meal. I mean, I think it's it's very easy to go home at night and turn on your oven and you do all the things and then you put the, the timer there for 15 minutes and that's it, your meal is nice and fresh. So it's, it, of course, if you cook too much and you want to eat the leftovers after, it's, it's perfect. For example, if you wanted to bring it for a lunch uh, to your walk or something like that, you could pre-cook it uh, in the morning or the day before, put it in your lunchbox and then a little bit in the microwave for a few minutes and it's, 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 it's perfect. 
That's great. Well, I'll let you go back to some cooking there while I answer this question. The pesto is lactose free as well as gluten free. No, it's not lactose free. No. Oh, the pesto isn't. Sorry. Sorry. No. The, the three pestos I'm doing, I'm doing the, the, the red pesto here, the basil. Yeah. And the white garlic. White garlic is absolutely divine. Okay. So are they, are they all gluten free? They're all gluten free certified uh, and they're all from natural products as well and no sugar in them. And but lactose free, are they lactose free? Yeah, not lactose free. That's the only three products we, we, we manufacture that has lactose in it. Okay. Everything else is lactose free. Okay. So the, the red chili pepper here is lactose free. The wasabi dip here is also lactose free. Right. And um, all the soups are lactose free. Brilliant. Fantastic. And gluten, -free, gluten free as well. Fantastic. Okie dokie. Um, we go back to cooking a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Off you go. So I hope you can see me there very well. So we have a little bit of oil here in a, in a, in a, in a sort of pan or any, any nice um, white pan. So we're gonna have sweet, we have sweet potatoes here. So the sweet potatoes, you can put them to be heated. So it's kind of a little dice and maybe 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters more or less. So we put the sweet potatoes in first. So what the dish we're going to do now is the sweet potatoes, a sauté of sweet potatoes and kale. We're gonna put some peas, we're gonna put some uh, uh, some mushroom into it and I'm going to be using the red chili pepper sauce to finish the dish and it's going to be served with a quinoa, organic quinoa and organic rice uh, into it. So first we have about one onions here. I diced the onions a little bit as well so I put a step with my uh, sweet potatoes with my onions. I'm going to color this for about uh, approximately five minutes until it gets a little bit of a golden color. Okay. So, it takes a little bit longer time to cook, so we start with that with that uh, base. The second things I'm having here is a little, a little bit of salted water, so just boiling water. We're going to put a little bit of salt here. And I, I have diced some uh, carrots as well, so just a couple of carrots, maybe 100 grams, 150 grams, doesn't have to be exact. Uh, the carrots will give a bit more light and, uh, lightness in the, in the dish, because with the rice and the quinoa, it's, it's, it's the starch. And then the sweet potatoes is kind of heavy as well. So I mix a little bit just to light up the dish. So we're going to blanch these carrots. So we put in a little bit of salted water. Okay. And then we have a few mushrooms here. So four nice mushrooms. Okay. We're going to dice this up. So we chop them up. We have first, and then we do a little dice of it. Or you can slice them if you want it, it's more easy for you. So again, like coming back to the to the rice and the quinoa. Um, it's very important if you are, especially if you are gluten-free or uh, sorry, gluten intolerant and celiac, that when you buy a brand of rice. Or quinoa that you always check the labels that's the first thing is to make sure it's certified gluten free but also it's very important to wash your rice and your quinoa before you use it just in case so you just put it in a little bit of water rinse the water maybe two or three times and then you're ready to cook it with just a bit of salted water great that's a great tip and the mushrooms you're using are just ordinary white or brown mushrooms yeah a little brown mushrooms i uh, have a little bit more flavors I kind of like the texture at the moment, but you can use any mushroom you want. You can use wild mushrooms, you can use the white mushroom. Let's just pick those ones. So and they give a lovely flavor. So a little bit of uh, sunflower oil or a little bit of olive oil. You can use again, you can use the oil that you wish. And could you use ready cooked uh, quinoa for this, um, Imar, or would you prefer if, if people were making quinoa from the start? No, I make quinoa from the start, absolutely. Um, I just I just pre cook it so it's have a bit of time for the demonstration, of course, yep. because it took a little bit more time. So I put a little bit of quinoa on this side, a bit of uh, organic rice here. And uh, it takes the, the, the rice, the, if it's a very good quality of rice, it would take a much more time to cook. That's how you know the rice is good. Oh, okay. If, if your rice takes 15 minutes to cook, that's where the danger is. You could be a cheap brand of rice that could be, you know, contaminated with something. So that's just to be careful with this. This organic rice will take about 35 minutes to cook. Oh. So rice could take 10 minutes, you know? So that's the thing to... But to the flavor is completely different. 
And would you use a stock while you're cooking your quinoa or your rice? No, no need to do that. Uh, you can if you want, but it's not necessarily because uh, you're going to put the sauce into the rice and you're going to use that. To yeah, the flavor. Okay, that's good. That's good to know. So we're going to cook that for a few minutes. We wait that it boils a little bit. I'm going to prepare the rest of the ingredients. What's your favorite dish to cook, Aymar? Well, I'm, a, I'm a real lover of seafood. Oh, wow, really? So I love seafood and I love vegetarian. I'm not, I, when I used to have the restaurant, I used to cook so much meat that, you know, I love the taste of the good meat as well, but it's not really my favorite. I wouldn't be eating meat maybe once every three months, maybe more. Oh, wow. But, um, I would cook a lot of fish and a lot of seafood and a lot of vegetarian dish as well. Right. Yeah, I did. fish is something I think we all need to start eating a bit more of as well, especially because it's good for the environment more so than meat as well. But uh, it's the nutrients and the minerals that are in fish are just so much better, I think, than, 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 than some of the meat products. But not to say cut meat out altogether, if that's what you like. Exactly. So and, and if, you, if you put a good uh, variety of vegetables, like I got good, very good vegetables here from the market, I got some lovely carrots, lovely they look amazing. And what sort of seasonal vegetables would you recommend at the moment? Well, you still have you have all the root vegetables coming out at the moment. You have the turnip, you have, you have the sorry the kale. You have a couple of winter vegetables coming out, like the lovely stem broccolis. Um, at the moment, it's the way the season for mushrooms. So it's, a, it's 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 very nice to eat good wild mushroom if you can them or if you can go and pick them up, of course. But you have also um, you know, a couple of, lots of variety of vegetables. Unfortunately, we don't get everything we want in the supermarket. So sometimes it's very good to go to your local farmer's market and then connect with the, the growers there because they will have much more choice. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You have, the, you have the chestnut at the moment, you have the pears, you have the queens, you have a lot of different fruit and vegetable from the autumn, which is great, you know. You make it sound so exciting. What's your favorite fish to cook with, I am Imer? My favorite fish to cook. I think I love uh, black soles. I love, I, I'm a bit more uh, like rock fish, like sea bass, like uh, gourmet. You know, they are kind of lovely flavors. They are delicate. They, they take a little bit of um, uh, walk into the kitchen to do as well. It's, it's more interesting. I think that's that, that type of fish. Oh, lovely. Great stuff. Great stuff. Um, what brand of quinoa is gluten-free? Well, Neve, I can see you're answering that, ask, asking that question. If you're a member of the Celiac Society, if you go to page 14 and 15 of the book, um, you will find a, a list of uh, gluten-free quinoa there for you. Uh, Clear Spring actually do an organic uh, quinoa flour. I'm just looking to see if there's actual uh, quinoa brown flour rice I see here as well. Uh, Bob's Red Mill, if you can get it, that's another one. Big Oz is another one. Um, and if you look, if you look in our book, or if you want to give us a, a, an email to info at celiac.ie, we'll be able to tell you what quinoas are gluten free. So, how is the salmon doing, um, Imar? Salmon is doing good. I just put up the heat a little bit because I just noticed had it 150. <laughs> okay. I'm talking too much, and I'm not doing my walk yet going well. I don't want to go to do it too fast because I want to show you both dish at the same time. No? So now we have the sweet potatoes here and the uh, the onions. So we cook them at the timer. There you go. Put it back on now. I'm going to show you, show you the fish there now. But nothing much happened yet. Oh yes, I can see that. It looked, oh, the colors are amazing. It, it looks absolutely vibrant. It, very vibrant. So, if you put that dish on the table for so guess, it's going to look like you did something professional to the fish, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Which is the point. So, now we cook the sweet potatoes and the onions a little bit. And after a couple of minutes, you put the mushroom into it. So, dice the mushrooms and put it together here. Okay. So, now we have our carrots here into the salted water. So, we you take one out of it of the carrot and check if it's breaking away. So it has to be soft, okay? So you put it into a spoon or into your hand and check it if it's soft, if it's crushed it out. A little one. bit of a bite, or does it have to have a bite or does it just have to be soft? No, a little bite. A little bite is good, but not too not too soft and not too hard. Yep. 
okay? So we have- I think, I think what the Italians call al dente. Al dente, exactly. So, the cucumber form, you check your pan as well, see if your pan gets a little bit too dry, you put a little bit more oil. So, turn it a little bit. Voila. So, once the carrots, you're happy with the carrots, we're going to put a little bit of peas in it. Peas? Peas. Fresh so, peas or frozen peas? Unfortunately, these ones are not fresh. <laughs> <laughs> you have to find it this time of the year, but when you have when you have them in the spring, I always recommend to buy a little bit more and, and freeze them up yourself because it's very yep. to have to use up in the dish all your own. So we put the peas and we're gonna put we wait until the the, uh, the water start to boil a little bit again and then we're gonna put some kale in there. So we chop the kale. I was wondering what that was. That's kale you're putting in, lovely, because kale can be quite rough. So I presume the uh, putting it into the boiling water softens it up a little bit. Exactly. So you soften it up a little bit with boiling water. And this dish I'm doing in two parts. So the, the second part I'm doing with the boiling vegetables. So I thought this can be done in advance. So then on the moment that you are cooking, you have everything ready. Yep. You know, and then you can put it all together and that's it. Brilliant. But very, very kind of straightforward, really. So we're going to cook for mushroom or sweet potatoes. So we can use as well, if you don't want sweet potatoes, you can use cotton squash or, pump, or pumpkin as well. But it will actually take a little bit uh, shorter time to cook, you know, it will be faster. So you have to take that in mind. All right. So we have okay here, we're going to blanch that. It's a very simple dish. And then we have a sweet red chili pepper sauce. So we're going to be using that into finishing up the dish. I presume you can buy that from the website as well, Imar, yeah? Uh, we're not selling to the website yet, uh, but on the website you can find the list of stores where we supply. And right. if you do have a problem, you want to, um, to contact me via the, the website and let me know which situation they are living. I can, I can direct them to the shop. Brilliant, fantastic, but, thank you. But we have one place that sells online for us, which is our pink store, but it's, it, it's, uh, they sell from online or around the place as well. They send Great, it to us. fantastic. I have a question in very quickly. Can you use quinoa in any way to make breaded fish? So I suppose for somebody who's a celiac and who would like to have breaded fish, uh, yes. the alternatives. I do know um, that you can use potato mash as in the dried smash that you would buy. Um, but again, check the label on that because I'm not 100% sure it's in our in our food list that you can use that to make a, a, a kind of like a breaded fish. But could you use quinoa? You could use quinoa. The only problem with uh, a breaded fish, is, it depends if they're gonna, if they're gonna take the fish or if they're gonna pan fry the fish. Yeah. So if they're gonna pan fry the fish, uh, the quinoa will, will um, We'll stick to the fish, but you have to be very, very gentle in the cooking. So cook it very, very low temperature and not too low either. So the, the hull has to be hot, but not too much because the quinoa burns and then it's not very nice, you know, in the palate. Yeah, no, so I get that. I would recommend to uh, cook your quinoa, okay? Pre cook your quinoa. And what you could do is you can toast your quinoa into a pan or you could uh, put it into the oven to um, kind of get toasted a little bit. Yeah. And then you put it around your fish so that the quinoa is already kind of um, frozen a little bit, yeah. right? But after yeah. it's cooked, not, not before it's cooked, after it's cooked. And then, great suggestion in here, gluten-free cornflakes are also great for breaded fish. Now that's a great yeah. idea. Absolutely. And don't forget your gluten-free oats as well. And of course, at Christmas time, I do know Mr. Crumb, uh, I do do a gluten-free bread crumb for Christmas. And I'm sure that is available in Super Value stores as well. Um, and again, if you're not sure, and you if you haven't got our book, don't forget as a member of the Celiac Society of Ireland, you get your free book list, which contains nearly seven and a half thousand gluten-free products that have been certified gluten-free by both laboratory testing and manufacturing. And we are here to help wherever possible and that's part of your membership with the celiac society another great idea in here are gluten-free crisps used as a coating i think that's fantastic ideas remember now, i'm going to finish the dish up i'm going to warm, warm up the um the quinoa and the white rice the, the rice 
going to finish up the dish. So we have here, just to recap a little bit, we have our sweet potatoes, mushroom and onion. So we just soak it up for a few minutes, okay? Just give them a bit of flavor, but not, not overly, um, not too much color in it, okay? Just a little bit of... Yep, I get that. So they don't really need to be browned so much as just cooked through. And all we want is that the sweet potatoes is kind of a little bit like the carrot, soft to the crush. Yep. I don't think that you can crush it here in the spoon. See, if I crush on it, it's crushing up in the spoon. I mean, that's good. That's perfect. Great. It has a little bit of resistance. So now the second thing is here we have a kale, we have a piece, we have a carrot. So we're going to strain this and we keep it hot. Keep it in the strainer, so don't, don't uh, make it cold or don't rinse it or anything like that. Just keep it in the strainer like this, make sure that all the water comes out. Okay. So now we're gonna prepare for first dish. I'm trying to do it here so that you can see, yeah? No, no, you can see we're perfect, it's great. Definitely, yes. Okay. When you pick up your rice, your quinoa, again, very important to wash your quinoa, wash your rice at least twice with clean water. You know, put it through, and put your rice on your quinoa in a little bowl, put some cold water in, into it, and then change the water two or three times if you can. And then you cook it in salted water. Great. That's a great tip. So everybody, just to re re reiterate, wash the rice and the quinoa when it comes out of the packet twice or three times put water through a sieve leave it sitting in a sieve and then what he's saying is then cook it in salted water so that's a great tip and i, I something i would i would certainly would be doing myself okay so let's go back to the dish we have a sweet potatoes now we're going to put the vegetable into it and this would be enough for like two people okay so we put all of them of beef and carrots. And then we're going to put 145 milliliters of the red chili pepper sauce. Okay. So Imar, if you didn't want to use rice in this, you could just use the quinoa, right? Absolutely, or you can make a mashed potatoes. It's a oh, very mashed potatoes, great. Oh, oh, it's very nice to mash potatoes, or oh, very nice as it is as well. Or oh, you can use, um, you can put, um, put it with a uh, gluten free noodles or gluten free pasta or anything like that. Brilliant. Or oh, you can do that dish to go with the roast meat, for example. So you do that a nice roast meat or a roast chicken or or uh, even a baked fillet of fish or something. This would be nice with cod, for example. So if you had a, a baked fillet of cod, you could serve that on the side of the, as a side dish. Lovely, lovely. It looks like it's coming together so lovely there. And the colors are just amazing. A beautiful colors, really or Tom, you know? I don't oh. know if you see it very well on the Zoom, but it, it's very vibrant. So now we can turn it off and I'm going to dish it up for you. And I'm going to show you the salmon. The salmon is absolutely a divine dish as well. So I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to dish it up here on the cooker. Can everybody see well here? Yes? Yep, we can, yep. Okay, I'm going to use the cooker just to dish it up. The great thing about having these cookery demonstrations at lunchtime is that everybody goes at well, two o'clock to literally think what they can do differently for their lunch. And you have all these sorts of, I suppose, chefy, they're all trying their chefy tips now when they get, when they start at two o'clock to eat up for, for their lunchtime. Absolutely. So that's a, that's a good, uh, they, they, get, they get hungry now, they want to eat. They want to sit down to have the dinner now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. Well, that's a lovely comment in here from Mary, who is 30 years a celiac, and she's saying this is a brilliant demonstration. She didn't know what she was missing by having um, all of these beautiful flavors put together. Um, and Mary, that's a lovely comment. Thank you so much for typing that up there. Always keep your food very simple. Always yep. keep your ingredients simple. Look at that beautiful salmon now. It's not too. Oh, look not too at that. Off your end. 
and the flavor is just the peppers and the pesto and the salmon, they really combine together very well. That looks amazing. This will be really within about, uh, about five or seven minutes because I was a little bit slow starting because I wanted to kind of do everything together. So now well, for the dish up, we have a quinoa and a rice together. It's quite nice to combine the two together. You've got a lovely healthy flavor coming up from the quinoa and mix with the texture of the rice. So I like mix the two together, it's quite nice. So we're gonna have two dishes here like that. So we put your quinoa in the middle of the plate like this. So put it down like a, like a little, a little net to be on this side. Like. Little nest, it's like a little nest. Yeah. That's a little nest. Well, while you're dishing that up there, I was going to, I can see you're going to, while you're just putting it on the plate, I just want to let people know that uh, we've had the winners here for our, for the prizes during this session. So Tracy Coleman, congratulations. You've won the 50 euro voucher with Super Value. Um, John Crook, you've won this La Skinny Chef hamper, you lucky ducky. Yvonne Sinnott, you've won your Dr. Coy's month supply of hazelnut and caramel bars. I'll be round to have one of those later. Pat Stevenson's congratulate Stevenson, congratulations. You have won the membership with the Celiac Society for a year. And Anna Doyle, you've won the Shelton hamper, which means that every child in the neighborhood will be round to your house for Halloween. Congratulations to you all, and thanks again to our sponsors for those lovely prizes. Imar, what are we up to next? I see you've created the uh, nest with the quinoa and the rice. We're, we're, we're almost ready to have the dinner. Oh, so, fantastic. I'll be, I'll, be down in a, I'll be down in an hour. In an hour. So we have a rice or quinoa here, and then we're going to dish up more uh, vegetables here, and we put it nicely in the center here. But this oh. is a very, very old, don't, don't be doing like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, simple presentation, but I mean, good presentation as well, okay? <laughs> Ginger. Okay, so we put our vegetables here. Like this. And it's absolutely delicious, delicious, delicious. I wish this was smelly vision. I bet you that smells divine. Absolutely. Beautiful flavor. It's very simple. And good food is always something that is like an experience, you know? Oh, absolutely. If you, if you eat something, you have to remind Remember about it, it has to stay. So we've got a little bit of chopped parsley on the top. A little bit of chopped parsley, and then I'm just gonna put a little bit of red chili pepper sauce just around the, the red of the rice here like this to recap the colors of the And that's chili. your own red chili sauce there, the skinny yeah. chef red chili yeah. sauce. Absolutely. So this is our first dish. Oh God, I, I, they're making me hungry for sure. It would be nice to be able to send it to you for testing now. Ah, Mary Clancy wishes she could smell it or even better taste it. It looks phenomenal. I so, that looks great. With potatoes, with kale, we have mushrooms. So just like a, a pan uh, your your sweet potatoes with your onions first, add your mushrooms and then separately you blend your carrots. You put your peas into it after your carrots kind of a little bit of dente, and then a little bit of chopped care just to make it soft and tender. And then put it all together, add your red chili pepper sauce, put it on your bed of rice and uh, quinoa, and then you're good to go. Well, there's a delir there's an order in from Ashburn. Can you send it up to County Meath, please? I have one. <laughs> we'll have to send it to Ashburn. Now let's do the, the first dish again. Let's go back to the salmon. Yeah, what's going on with the salmon? And the salmon is absolutely perfect now. So we turn it off, we warm up the plate, always warm up your plate before you eat the main course to keep it nice and hot and more enjoyable. So for the salmon, I've prepared a little bit in advance, a little bit of uh, uh, presentation. So we have a few baby potatoes here. Yep. Okay. A couple of asparagus. Mm. And just to bring back the, the scene to the plate, I, I put a couple of mussels here that I just did. Oh. Topping. Looks gorgeous. So we're going to move that into the dish. We're going to put, we're going to cut a little bit of lemon. Anybody have any questions? Well, there's a couple in actually. Um, if you were to coat prawns and cook in an oven, how long would you suggest to cook the prawns for? 
because the inspiration is coming now, you see. They're all getting inspired now with what you're doing. And in particular, the fact that we are recommending things like uh, gluten-free cornflakes and instant mash for a gluten-free bread coating. And don't forget, people, you can also use uh, gluten-free bread to make gluten-free breadcrumbs. But if you were going to coat prawns, Imer, how long do you recommend? Okay, so the first, the first uh, thing is to know what type of prawns they are cooking, because if they are cooking a tiger prawns, for example, it's more tough than a, than a lagoustine prawn or a ocean prawn. So the, the different varieties of prawns in super value or in, in other stuff. So it depends on the type of prawns. Okay. Uh, normally what I would do if I cook prawns, I would do the very similar I did with the vegetable here. I would put a little bit of oil, a little bit of garlic in a French man. I use a lot of garlic, of course. And then I would pan fry my prompts for a couple of seconds, just even like a minute on both sides, and then finish them in the oven for about five minutes. Okay, great stuff. How long do you cook your asparagus for? That's something I'm curious about. I would usually only blanch it myself in salted water. That's exactly what I did, yeah. So the very same way I did the carrots and the vegetable there, you just blanch them in salted water and then cool them down and keep them for your, for your dish. Brilliant. And if you didn't, if you were allergic to shellfish, could you serve something else instead? On the oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. You, I just use the muscle for the presentation. You could use anything else or just even a slice of lemon. You can take um, the chef out of the kitchen, but you can never take the, 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 the presentation out of the chef, so to speak. That's exactly, exactly. It has to be, has to look like our test. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dying to see the salmon. The salmon is the really, because in our house, it's very much uh, a, a one way, uh, one way of cooking salmon. So now I have another way, which is great. Now you see the quality of the, the crust now, see the yeah. pesto. So it's kind of, the, the peppers have, have melted down to the pesto a little bit, so it's very nice. It makes a really good crust. crust. Oh, it looks amazing. It really does. So now we want to dish it up. So make sure you leave your fish all around before you pick it up on the tray. And as you can see here, you're going to see it in a few seconds. I'm going to show you to do. The skin stays in the tray. That's why you don't put too much oil. And that's why you don't remove the skin. The skin will actually stick to the to the baking dish. So right, when you yeah. when you serve the fish, the, the fish will move out the skin then. All right, good idea. Yeah, I'm going to show you to so that's why I use the skin. I use the skin to keep the fish moist. And but the skin stays on the tray once what the skin is on the tray. Exactly. Oh, great idea. So it's a natural, it, it, it's a natural moisture from the fish. Because between the, the flesh of the fish and the skin, there is a, a like a little thin layers of fat. Basically. Yeah. That's a great from the, from idea. Because, because, because I would never have done that. So we have the potatoes here. Just to, I'm going to decorate this the very same way as I would decorate it in a restaurant. And then you put your, your asparagus. Oh, voila. that just looks superb. Voila. <gasps> C'est magnifique. That's magnifique. The, ops, it's gorgeous. It looks delicious. I really wish I could tuck into that right now. And then the flavor is absolutely amazing. You know, I mean, the fish has to be cooked uh, very well, very soft. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this fish now and I'll show it to you in a second. So if I take the fork. Um, the fish has to be absolutely, see if you, if you look at the inside of the fish, it's split in the middle, it's very, very nice and soft. It just looks, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. I must get you to take pictures of those so we can no, send them to the people on the call. Everybody crazy now. Oh, you are making me crazy now. Stop it. Stop it. Delicious. And it's very soft. Lovely texture. And um, the fish is not dry, but when it's cooked through it as well. And it's just a flavor, 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 flavor. Oh, absolutely. And that really only took about between 15 and 20 minutes to cook that fish, which was lovely as well at that temperature that you recommended, 180 degrees centigrade. Imer, I have to say that has been fantastic. But as you know, the Irish like to have a bit of a sweet at the end of a dinner. So what would you serve to complement that as a dessert? 
Well, at this, at this time of the year, you have a lot of uh, seasonal food. So you have, I would do a beautiful uh, uh, tartare with a, with a gluten-free pastry, because you yeah. need to do a gluten-free pastry. So I will use the apple because they're in season. I will use the pears as well. So if you were to do a, a tart tartare, which is a, a traditional French uh, way to do the, the, the tart, OK? Yep. It's quite simple. Uh, you need a small fine pan about 30 centimeters in diameter and yep. with, with about a, a thickness of about an inch, you know? Yep. And um, so you put a little bit of sugar and a little bit of butter. Of course, in French, we use a lot of butter, but you have beautiful butter in Ireland as well. Yep. So a little bit of sugar there, a nice tablespoon of Kerrygold butter and about a tablespoon and a half of sugar. And you, you cut the, you peel the apple and you cut them in a half right down in the middle, remove the inside, and then the, the interior of the apple, you put uh, down into the pan, into the melted butter and sugar, and you caramelize the apple. Oh, caramelized apple. You caramelize in the pan. So this happens in the cooker, right? And uh, then you put your gluten-free pastry, so you roll out your gluten-free pastry, and you should make sure you take either a plate or something that is the same diameter of the pan, Yep. And you put, you cut the pastry, and then once the, the, the apples are well caramelized, okay, you put your pastry on the top. Yeah. And you put that in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. And about 180 degrees, and you have a beautiful dessert. Oh, sounds gorgeous. And don't forget, people, we are going to be talking on Friday with Maraid from Roll It Pastry, who does a gluten-free pastry and, again, available in Super Value stores and came from the same food academy as Imar. So, you know, if, you if you're looking to, for something to complement his dish and do your own tart tartin, you can actually use Maraid's pastry as well. Imar, we have no more questions and people are weak from what we are talking about. In other words, they are. <laughs> uh, so I have to say, it has been an absolute pleasure what you cook has been and I'm so delighted that we have your range of products now that we can add to our gluten-free food list as well for 2021 uh, again I can't thank you enough if there's ever anything else that we can do for you because I can guarantee you I'm sure there are lots of people who'd love to see another cooking demonstration from Lusky Chef. we'd be delighted to work with you in the future I'm delighted to do it again I'm absolutely delighted. We're looking Thank forward to that. Thank you so much indeed. Imar, enjoy your lunch now because I'm sure somebody's going to have to eat all of that. We yeah, have a beautiful wine to go with it. Oh, <laughs> stop it. That's it now. We're done in. Thanks so much, Imar. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Merci. beaucoup. Au revoir. Au revoir. Goodbye. Bye bye. Happy bye bye. Happy cooking. Bye bye.